Next, we're going to look at the tensor phase gelata and the IT band. Frank Ober in the 1930s discussed a contracted TFL and IT band and the relationship to sciatic pain. So it makes sense to maybe test it using the Ober's test. The problem we've got is, is that if we decide that it's, it's shortened, then we're going to ask ourselves the question, why might that be? Typically, the TFL might decide to shorten because there is an underlying weakness of the gluteus medius. So when you are standing on one leg, the TFL works too hard and then suddenly becomes taut, increases the tension to the band, and then you get pain on a lateral femoral condyle, and it's a typical presentation of what we call a runner's knee or iliotibial band friction syndrome. When we come to lengthen the IT band, there's a study done in 2008 by Chowdhury, and he talked about 925 kilograms is needed to change the length of the IT band by only 1%. So the study basically said that it's almost near impossible to truly lengthen the IT band. However, by changing the tone of a TFL, or by changing the position of a pelvis, there is a potential for changing the, the tone of the IT band. So when we come to lengthen, it just bear that in mind that it needs quite a lot of effort to, to change the actual length, but we still might be able to affect the, the tone of it. Now, the over test, the shoulder, the hip, the knee is in line, and then when I feel the weight of the leg is relaxed and I've got the weight, I'll slowly lower the leg down. And according to Ober, if it drops below the horizontal like it does, it's okay. If it stays around the horizontal like this, then it might be held in a short position. What you need to avoid is, is the TFL might want to take you into flexion and rotate you internally. So if you allow the hip to drop down and in, you're actually shortening the structure. So you need to keep shoulder, hip, knee in a line, cradle the weight, don't let it go, just almost like a half squat as you drop down. And if it drops down below the horizontal, it's okay. Now let's lengthen the IT, have a line your back please. But we'll actually use the other side for the demonstration. So imagine I tested this side, so we're going to lengthen that leg. Place the top leg over. The bottom leg, we can slowly add into a, like a side bend in our adducted position here. We can also, if we want to, place the hand under the head and slowly side bend. So we actually get, maybe not so much, we actually get lengthening of a lateral line here. So you might find the TFL and the QL it might be uh, a good way of lengthening both structures. From this position, what we can do is slowly take the leg in to adduction, where you have a lengthening coming in from the TFL. Take a small breath in, your left leg push. So my patient is pushing their leg into my hand, activating the left tensor fascia lata. After the 10 seconds, and on the relaxation, take a breath in, and as they breathe out, I can slowly take the leg into further adduction here. This hand stabilizes the opposite leg. You can see that I need to stabilize it, otherwise it will just roll towards me. People also say they might get a feeling of a lengthening on the piriformis from this position. What I do quite often from that position, because I'm pulling and it's quite hard work, I tend to step into the space and place their leg against my hip. So now take a breath in and slowly push your leg into me. So the patient is pushing her leg for 10 seconds. So I'm not holding or pulling now. After 10 seconds, relax. And as they breathe in and breathe out, I literally just slowly drift my hip that way, stabilizing the opposite side to get a good lengthening of the TFL and the IT band. And that for me works better than the first one.